How's it going, Robot Wars fans? Hardcore Kid here with another episode of the Hardcore Podcast. I am here with my good friend and fellow reviewer, Otaku Nate. Oh my god, this heat, man. <laughs> this is one of the best first episodes of any Robot Wars series ever. Yeah, you, you were going crazy during this episode. You were bellowing. Well... I'm a very enthusiastic person. I mean, I've taken you yeah. to Devil's Games with me, much to your chagrin. <laughs> yeah, I've heard you screaming goal in the very rare times that the Devil scored a goal. <laughs> well, here's hoping that the team is better next year. The future looks bright. It's just, it's a frustrating rebuild. Really. Yeah, well. So, today, we're going to talk about the very first episode of the brand new series of Robot Wars... Heat A of Robot Wars, The Ninth Wars. And, oh man, we have got an action-packed heat in store. But first, uh, let's talk about some of the things that have changed um, uh, in terms of like presentation and the new hazard. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's still hosted by Daryl Bryan and Angela Scanlon. I thought they were great, as always. And um, they got they got a whole, whole kinds of new... Uh, uh, Crazy graphic and technical bits. They got new uh, battle boards that show the uh, what was it? The speed, the uh, the, the, the I believe it, it, it the uh, weight, the speed, drive, power, and so, battery, and etc. Yes, um, and uh, I yeah, it feels reminiscent of the old wars with um the way that the boards would come down in that sort of a uh, garage door, if you can call it manner. And I, and I really like uh, the announcer. Uh, uh, call him the names of the bots. He's like uh, Sabertooth, Drum Spinner, mm-hmm. or, or uh, Aftershock, Vertical Spinner. I I don't think it's necessary, but I like that it's there. I honestly think that if you're gonna ha- have uh, somebody announce the uh, weapon of your robot, just leave it to Jonathan Pierce. <laughs> yeah. Well, also there's a new feature for this wars, and um. You know how uh, you press, there's a pit release tire? They had it in the old series, and they got it in the new series. Well, this series, whenever you press the pit release button, there's a dial on the top, and whenever you press the button, it'll randomly choose between opening up the pit or sending one of the house robots uh, out to uh, catch you. They call it a rogue house robot. And I really like this new feature. It adds a nice level of um, tactics to the... To the, uh, to the match. And, uh, yeah, and it also, uh, one of the big complaints of last series where the house robots weren't getting involved. The house robots, it, they, uh, cu- pretty much, they, uh, got a, got a few, uh, there were a lot of moments in this match oh, that well, were pretty we'll, good. Oh, we'll get to the first big hit in the first melee. Yes, um, yeah, but uh, I like this feature, and, uh, there were a, there were a lot of good robots in this heat. In fact, um, um, in the second round, um, the four robots that qualified for the round robin tournaments, any of them could have made the semifinals or well, the grand final. Well, let's uh, let's get to the robots proper, and we're gonna start with our first melee. All right, Jelly. Je- first melee is Jellyfish versus Nuts Two versus Rapid versus Terrots. This was a fun melee. Yeah, basically, um, ba- and very interesting is that. Uh, de- Dave from the uh, Nuts team, he split off, and now he's got uh, his own robot, Jellyfish. I love Jellyfish, as you <laughs> said in the preview. Yeah, um, and uh, he's out to prove a point, and I like that. He's he's built. You can say that his machine looks like utter pants or techno <laughs> techno trousers, if you. But you will. know what? Unlike techno trousers, this robot kind of sort of worked and we'll get to that later on in the episode but um oh we will <laughs> um basically it was kind of obvious which robots were going to win yeah and the winners were terahertz and rapid terahertz's axe looked effective but they had problems with it the whole night and this time it was not their gas bottle no it's just like a lot of heavy hits and rapid um rat rapid uh it was a strong bot. It got some really big flips in, especially on Jellyfish. Um, oh, those flips were delicious. Because, like, Jellyfish is a wide robot. It's, like, one of the widest robots ever. But it didn't really stop stop Rapid from just flipping it all over the place until eventually Jellyfish was 
basically immobilized. It tossed it like a pizza. Speaking of tossed... Oh, actually, wait, wait. What? I shouldn't... I shouldn't say tossed to our uh, UK... Um, oh, come on. To Well, let's just say that tossed in the UK it means something completely different. Get your mind out of the gutter, Nate. Well, again, it's amazing how just one innocent word like toss in the US means Throw. something different in the UK. Punt. No. Kick. Well... Hit. It was amazing S-O-O-T-A. how... S-O-O-T-A. Well... Oh yeah, and then there yeah. was. The- I would like I would like to uh, offer an apology for Team Nuts because, as the battle was starting, they showed Matilda entering the arena, and I said, "You know what? I would really like to see Matilda get that flywheel going." Because even to th- this day, she I still consider her the most destructive house robot, and that flywheel just makes a mess of everything. Like last year, it completely destroyed th- parts of Thor. It sent Behemoth flying across the arena. I want to see more of that flywheel, and uh, I think I kind of jinxed the Nuts team. You got what you wanted. <laughs> uh, well, poor poor Nuts. Like, um, halfway through the match, it, it looked like it was losing power. Like, there, there was large portions. There was, there was a section where Jellyfish was getting flipped over, and I'm like, where the heck is Nuts? Then I see Nuts. It's just limping over by the pit. And it's like, there's not much left of it. And then eventually, Matilda just backed right into Nuts, sent it flying like a football, clear over the rail. And that, it's, that, was, that was a field goal. And it's good! For, for uh... It was... <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, well, they certainly did start off the, uh, the Ninth Wars with a bang. Yes. It was but, a suta, and it was fine. It was glorious. Um, yeah, big apology, big condolences to, uh, the Nuts team. They, they tried, but, uh, yeah, it, it was easy who was, go- it was, it was obvious who was going to win this match, and that was Terahertz and Rapid. Well, we'll get to Rapid in, uh, when we get yeah. to the head-to-heads. So, the second match, Af- Will, Will Thomas's Aftershock, uh, Team Cold Fusion's Cranky, Gabriel Strode's Sabretooth. It's Strode, right? Stroud. Stroud. Sorry, I was thinking of Halloween. And uh, Tomahawk from uh, the Netherlands. Well, I don't think there was any debate over who was going to win this no, fight. No, not really. I expected better from Cranky at the moment Will Thomas got that disc going. And uh, you remember uh, in the last episode when I talked about a robot getting side-stranded on their weapon and we called it doing the thing? Cranky did the thing in this he, match. He certainly did do the thing. And he got stuck on his weapon. Oh, also, I, I just want to point out, um, Cranky was insulated using tin foil. Yeah. I think that, that was supposed to protect it from the flames? I don't know, because tin foil is heat conductive. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure if, <laughs> if Robin Herrick hears this, he'll explain just why he did it. But, you know... I've heard I'm pretty a, sure he did. I don't think we were listening. <laughs> I've heard the, uh, I've heard, yeah, unfortunately we weren't listening to the interviews. We are, we're doing this immediately after the episode, so we can't, um, we don't really have time to go back and listen to everything, but just seeing it, I've heard the old saying, you know, oh, that robot looks like it was built from tin foil. I've never heard of a robot using tin foil in its design. I think uh, Hardvark had a tinfoil bottom back in Series 2. I don't know. Yeah, nobody really remembers Hardvark. But uh, this match, it it really... Uh, Will Thomas got to show off what Aftershock could do. It sent Cranky flipping all over the place. And um, speaking of showing what you can do, Sabretooth finally won a match! Yay! Yay! Let's have a round of golf claps for Gabriel Stroud. Yeah, Sabretooth, it, it it was nasty in this match. It just tore <laughs> tore the uh eight just tore the armor right off of Tomahawk, just throwing it around. So, I felt so bad for Tomahawk though, because those girls came all the way from the Netherlands. Yeah, it's 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 rough, but you know that kind it, of it stuff happens. Out, it went out the same way as its predecessor. Actually, it, it, it to be fair, I think it lasted longer than it did in Series Seven. It did last a little longer, yes. Yeah. 
One thing I noticed about Tomahawk's axe, and it's basically the same axe as it was back in uh, the Seventh Wars, it uses the dull end. You're not really going to be able to do much to a robot with the dull end. W- wouldn't it be more effective to have, like, the sharp point at the back? I think the um the sharp end, it's mostly to cause a greater shock than just simply... It's like, say, using a knife to cut a piece of celery as opposed to stabbing it with a pen. A knife, uh, a pe- thing of celery made out of armor, hard ox, titanium, aluminum, wood. I need scissors, 61. <laughs> a pair of scissors. But yeah, a- again, a very, it was, it was, e- it was easy to predict who would win this and it was uh, obviously Aftershock and Sabretooth. If I could just address one comment that I read on the Facebook page, because we were live commenting this on Facebook. Um, a lot of, one person said that, you know, it was unfair that Aftershock was able to dominate its competition. Oh, please. That's why we love Robot Wars. <laughs> I mean, this Oh is... no, somebody built an overpowered disc spinner. How dare they enter it into a robot event? I would like to see, though, it's a shame they're not in the series, but I'd love to see Aftershock versus TR2. Yeah, that would be a hell of a match. I on I will say though, because uh, Will Thomas said that one of his uh, machines' biggest weakness was that it couldn't be was that um, it didn't have an effective self writer. I mean, it did oh. self write in its yeah. fight against Rapid, which we'll get to shortly. And um, it, I'm, I'm sure it can be able to self write. Uh, so- sometimes, it, sometimes if. If you get, like, again, if you get stuck on your weapon, you might not be able to self-write from there, but... No, there there was a point later on in the episode, after Shock went up against the wall, it just did a whole somersault and just came back on its wheels. So, would you say it did the thing? Um, no, because it didn't get stuck on its weapon. But it did do another thing. Actually, it did a lot of things in this episode. Oh, well, we'll get to that. So... Sabretooth and Aftershock go through, and now we move on to the head-to-heads, starting with Terahertz versus Sabretooth. A grudge match. Yes, because... Dating all the way back to Series 6. Yeah, for those who are unaware, Gabriel Stroud, thanks to his rotten luck, (laughs) he uh, entered Sabretooth into Series 6, and its weapon broke right before filming, so he had to fit a tire onto it. And suffice to say, Terahertz beat the ever-living crap out of it. But this fight, though, it, from the beginning, it really looked like Terahertz was going to win. Because I it thought was, so, too. It, it was pushing Sabretooth around. It was getting some shots in with the axe. And then Sabretooth went ahead, got behind Terahertz, ripped off its tail, just went straight in, into its back, just... Made a complete tore mess out, of it. Tore up the polycarb. Oh, man. Holy cow. And the, the, my favorite part of this fight wasn't all the destruction. John Reed was so mad about this. Yeah, I, I've seen, and I've seen, John Reed has fought robots like Nightmare and Tombstone, and he, he, he kept himself together. Here, he was freaking out. John Reed is not a happy camper. <laughs> Well, it was it was expected. One of his uh, his wheels broke, so he was stuck going around in circles for the rest of the match. And he was telling his uh, he was telling Nick not to fire the axe. Fire the axe! No, not now. Fire it now. <laughs> and it was in this fight where we got to see the new Rogue House robot. Yeah, uh, Sabretooth pressed the button. The big hand went right to Rogue House robot, and then Shunt just came out and. Just beat the ever-living hell out of terahertz. I love the filter they have when they <laughs> use the house robot camera. I remember, uh, like, like back in the earlier series, uh, the house robot cams had, like, this crazy little green graphics on it. Like, uh, it had shunt cam at the bottom, had all this jargon all around it. Here it has, like, some weird blood-red cloud around the outside. I guess it was supposed to represent, like, shunt has bloodshot eyes or something. He's shunt attacking me- them. Shunt means business. That was really weird, but... It works. You know, it just shows that the house robots are now... They're unleashed, per se. Unleash the beasts. But yeah, it was a shame. Terahertz just got got pummeled. 
Sabretooth wins by, I guess, KO? Because they got the three points. Uh, they won, I think they won, Va- I think this was their only KO of the night. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Sabretooth, Gabriel again wins another match. Hey, only a few more and you can finally say that you have more wins than Napalm. How many wins does Napalm have? Like, eight? Let's look this up. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna count its, um... It's gauntlet run where it took first. Let's see, how many wins does Napalm have? We're going to edit this out, by the way. To the wiki! To the back! Seven! Seven wins, seven losses. So, Gabe, you only have five more wins to go before you can say you have more than Napalm. (laughs) Well, if they have a Tenth Wars, I'm sure he can pull it off. That is whatever's left of Sabretooth come the Tenth Wars. Yeah, unfortunately, after the fight, it was discovered that a big chunk of Sabretooth's drum broke off. Yeah, that was nasty. It was like, cripes, get Sabretooth to the dentist. One of its fangs just got ripped right off. I'm sure Dave Laurie's wife can uh, take care of his teeth. (laughs) Hey, she's a dentist. (laughs) A horse dentist. That, that was yeah. That was really funny. They they show uh, they show the uh, little video clips uh, where um, you know they show what the teams do and what goes into building their bots. BattleBots had a, a similar feature like that. Robot Wars, I think, uh, kind of like ha- it. Kind of like has more of a budget to it. I don't know. They get, you got the teams just sitting in their chairs. Just... Well, they they were able to go into the hospital where Peter Forzy works. <laughs> Let's not forget that great piece of imagery last season. You know why they call me the dentist, don't you? <laughs> so let's go on to our next fight. Rapid versus Aftershock. This one could have gone either way for me. Yeah, because um, when, when we were making predictions, I predicted Aftershock. Nate predicted uh, Rapid because um, we weren't sure. Uh, if uh, Rapid was able to get underneath Aftershock and just throw it out, which it almost did, it could have won this match. But no, Aftershock managed to get some hits in with the disc. Just made a complete mess of Rapid's flipper. Bent it. It it bent bent it. it. Flipped it upside down. Rapid couldn't self-right. Game over. That was it. Not much to say about this match. Uh, Will sort of went easy on uh, Rapid, which um, we'll we'll get to the next fight. Yeah, and... um, Rapid was over and out, and pretty much out for the count after that. Yeah, the, uh, I think their ram was damaged, and, uh, so was one of their wheels. Yep, and they they couldn't replace it, and really, w- the last, uh, f- episode I showed, uh, the, uh, the, uh, picture of those gearboxes that, uh, Rapid had, and it's like, wow, so, so much to go into this robot. And then, Jonathan Pierce said, like, Josh... Their captain says that they can't reveal how much the robot costs to build. Jonathan Pierce does it anyway. (laughs) 25,000 pounds for that. Oh, such a shame. Hey, Rapid, I I really do wish Rapid all the best. I I hope it does well in the next wars, but you know, if you keep going out like this, we're going to have to start calling your robot Mortis. (laughs) Oh, boy. Well, hopefully they, Rapid, uh, we'll see them back. Maybe see them on the live circuit. Hey, I, I hope I hope we do. I I really want them to do well. Speaking of destroyed, trashed, inoperable, that brings us to our next match: Aftershock versus Sabretooth. Oh man! Why will why does how can that man be from this planet? Does he have no conscience? Does he have no heart? Does he have no soul? You son of a bitch! Do you realize what you've done? Channeling the old spirit of Jim Ross. But God is my witness, he has broken in half. Well, and he certainly S- was. Sabretooth pretty much was broken in half in this match. You could say it was broken. <laughs> oh, man. there. Are, I really... The, the, the spoiler... On they, the they, show, they showed spoilers from the website. This, this was actually a very spoiler-heavy. I mean... That they showed footage from the introduction of, like, the various heats. And uh, one of the uh, big, uh, I wouldn't call it a big spoiler, but they actually did show Apollo lifting up Sir Kill a lot. 
trying to get that final house robot kill in. Oh man, this uh, this fight, yeah, like I want to say there was almost nothing left. Sabretooth, like he wrecked the chassis, was... tore the top off, red shredded the tire, man, completely and, wrecked. And I would say, you know, I, I'm all for destruction in Robot Wars, but Will Thomas just kept going. Want more? Ah, oh, even Ray Billings. Even Ray Billings would say, dude, mm. that's enough. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think they would have been able to hear uh, Gabriel just... Cause now, now they got they, they got the drivers in two in the two separate pods now. Yes, they do. Which really begs the question, why would you put all the drivers in one pod? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Like, what, what if one of the drivers tries to attack the other in the midst of battle? <laughs> well, I think they try to do that, um... As sort of a way to... It, it's like they, what they did in the old wars, where uh, you had uh, one control pod on one side, one on the other. It, it, it makes sense from that standpoint. Well, poor Gabriel. He, he finally got two wins under his belt, and then he just gets obliterated. And really, it didn't really recover from that. No, it didn't. But that that's... All fair is love and war in Robot Wars. You go out there, you fight. Sometimes you might come out in one piece. Sometimes you come out in a bin bag. Well, unfortunately, we got even more bad news as Rapid could not repair their gearbox. (laughs) But there was some good news. They brought back Jellyfish. Yay! (laughs) Oh. (laughs) The bad news is they had to fight Terahertz. Well, there's not much to say about this other than Terahertz drove up to Jellyfish, hit it with its axe once, and that was it for... You know you know why Jellyfish broke down, right? Yeah, it hit their speed controller. Ah, not only that, it lost the googly eyes. Oh, The googly eyes, those were the big weakness. You can't have a they're, robot... They're, they're, the, they're the new power link. Once those eyes pop off, you're dead. Well, thankfully, though, um, you know... They talked about how Dave left the Nuts team. They tried to make this all dramatic. And yet, who does he have with him in his battles? Our good friends, Alex Shakespeare and Rory Mangles. Yep. It's a Nuts team reunion. Sort of. And luckily for uh, Dave, uh, Rory's an expert in speed controllers. So he was able to get Jellyfish back together with no problem. Yep. I'd also uh, like to wish a big thank you to Alex Shakey for uh, building that little fairy weight robot. For uh, me, because um, I don't know, I want I wanted a, a robot to fight with in the fairy weight category, and uh, since I only fight with kids, because I, I I'm really not that good at building bots. I've I've built a few wedge bots, and they didn't work. <laughs> but it, he he's a good guy. He, he built like a mini behemoth, and it runs really well. So, what's the name of your fairy, fairy weight man? Brother Nero. We my. It's a it's a robot that is designed to delete obsolete delete obsolete delete obsolete delete. Yeah, sorry, we had to do that. We're, we're gonna be making uh, broken hearty references in every episode, aren't we? Maybe <laughs> we 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 had the gold boat in the last one. Yeah, they found Brian Alvarez's gold boat, <laughs> dilapidated boat. No, 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 the, the dilapidated the boat became boat. a golden boat. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um. What was the next match? It was, I believe it was, Terahertz versus Aftershock. This this could have been the Heat Final. Yeah. I, I, I wanted this to be the Heat Final. Terahertz and Aftershock just beating the living hell out of each other. Unfortunately, it was not to be as Terahertz still had issues. It, it, it tried. I mean, John Reed, he, he went in, he got that wedge under Aftershock, just pushed him into Shunt. Aftershock's disc was going right into Shunt's scoop, but... It was, he tried, but once uh, a combat, th- this was really cool. Ba- basically, uh, Aftershock uh, pushed Terahertz towards the flipper. The flipper activates, Aftershock's disc goes right underneath Terahertz's wedge, and Terahertz just goes flying, just right across the arena. I think, besides Nuts getting sued, that's my, uh, that's my favorite moment of the night. Just Terahertz being launched by Aftershock. 
if its axe was working, I think this fight could have gone in a very different direction, but unfortunately it was not to be. No. Mm, Terror hurts. The, the axe was getting weaker and weaker, and eventually Aftershock got a flip in with the disc, and that was basically it. Mm-hmm. And then we came to the last fight. <sighs> <laughs> this was the saddest match I've ever seen. Even sadder than Foxic versus Mr. Speed Squared. And I loved every second of it. I, I, you uh, know what? I'll say this was better than Foxic versus Mr. Speed Squared because... At least something happened. At least Jellyfish was able to work. <laughs> so basically, Sabretooth hadn't recovered from its match with Aftershock. Jellyfish just got its big... Cr- little crushing arms clamper, into it. Clamper. Clamper. Just pu- pushing Sabretooth all over the place. Sabretooth uh, tried to get its drum in, but it could, really couldn't do anything. Which, that, that was another thing. Um, uh, as Just before the match, they were showing uh, Sabretooth in the test arena. And uh, Angela Scanlon, she said, um, if Sabretooth can't get their weapon to work, they're out. What? Like... Not if... It- if it, if it doesn't have an act an active weapon, it's immobilized or it's disqualified. Because that what kind of sense does that make? I mean, Rapid couldn't move, and they had to pull out. I'd rather an oh, I would rather have a Rapid with an inactive flipper than a saber tooth that can't move at all. Yeah, like if if, if saber tooth could move, then you, it, like if it has if the drive wheels are still going, you should still be able to fight. But I guess um. I guess it's that whole, you know, active weapon rule that kind of screwed Storm 2. Well, bit. I'll say this um, about uh, the battle. Jellyfish's weapon did not work the way I thought it would. It kind of, sort of was. Like, I guess the, I, clamp, I thought, the clamper goes in the middle and then and then they come back out again. I thought, like, like the, the, I thought, like, the little arm in the middle was just to hold the robot in place while the side arms moved into to clamp it but nope it's just, it's just this one tiny little rod in the middle well it worked and it sure did up until the last few seconds where both both robots were stuck over the pit zone and i i so badly wanted to see the pit just activate and both robots just fall right in <laughs> that would have been so funny yes this fight was it was sad but it was so entertaining yeah and jellyfish got the win and the two points but it wasn't enough and um, ter- uh, Terror Hurts and Sabretooth were tied with three points, but since Sabretooth uh, won that match, they got to go through to the heat final. And sadly, Terror Hurts went out. Yeah. Well, oh, by the way, we missed the most important thing about this uh, fight. Mm-hmm. When uh, Dara was interviewing the two teams at the start, he asked uh, Dave, and Dave had my favorite quote of the night. Dave... They inter- They ask Dave, what's your strategy for this fight? And he just simply says, beat him. <laughs> beat well, him. Well, you certainly did, Dave. You certainly did. And if you want to know, just, you can ridicule Jellyfish all you want, but the crowd was loving Jellyfish. They, they were chanting Jellyfish. Jellyfish was over. Yes, it's more over than most of the, ro- most of the WWE roster, in fact. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was a good swan song for Jellyfish. Just go in, have some fun a little bit. Just t- toss your, just push your opponent around and get get that win under that W under your belt. And that's what Robot Wars is all about. Which leads us actually. Uh, you want to talk about that little uh, Connect Four uh, segment? Oh in yes. Between? You know, one thing that I really like about the new series of Robot Wars that I have to praise it over BattleBots is that they have a nice balance between the action and talking. And they had these little educational vignettes, I guess you'd call them, that featured the various judges um, to the arena. This time, it was Sethu Vijayakumar. I hope I, I... Yeah, I think I said that name, right? Um, talk, Kuma. Talking about a um use of shared autonomy and they they were basically showing uh Angela playing connect 4 with a robot arm and losing to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that's the, really cool those segments I, I don't know i mean you can say that they're filler but it's such entertaining it, it's filler. good filler uh, it's like battlebots they could easily fit 
five, maybe six matches into an episode. If they at least cut down all the segments with all the talking and I, entrances. Do we really and need the fa- Do we really need the faux sports center anal- analysis of all these robots? Oh God! Especially with one announcer who doesn't care and Kenny Florian. <laughs> well, God bless Kenny. He's been through a lot. So, but you know what? I, I think uh, in the last series he was be- he was much better. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, he actually name dropped a self writing mechanism, which is a shock. It's like, wow, dude, you actually uh, did some research. I think Kenny, I think Kenny Florian would be better as the host of uh, BattleBots. But I we're getting off topic. Let's yeah. let's get into the heat final. We'll, we'll review BattleBots at a later date. I think now that we've started the hardcore podcast, we. Uh, can review a lot of shows. We can review some, ep- maybe some episodes of the old Robot Wars, the old BattleBots, Robotica. Maybe we'll uh, do some. Maybe maybe I'll strap you in, show you some anime movies, and we'll I'll give and I'll I'll have your reaction to them. As long as it is no BDSM movies, thank you. I have no porn in my collection, in spite of what my, all the posters in my room uh, suggest. Uh, well, that is a nice picture of Revy, that's for sure. Indeed. Um, signed by Ray Heroy, the creator. Yeah. Anyway, so on to the heat final. Not really much to say. Sabretooth still hadn't recovered. Aftershock just got more hits in. K- Kill a lot uh, went in. Burned it. Burned Sabretooth over the flame pit. Did its little dance. Hey, you can't say the house robots didn't do anything this heat. No. Yeah, we got to see Kill a Lot's pirouette again. That was a nice touch. I still think. The, the time is going to come when Kill a Lot just flops over. Well, it, it weighs more, but it just looks, it looks about as unstable. Like, Mr. Psycho, he was kind of unstable a little bit, and that's probably why he just flopped over during the German series. I don't know, like, maybe if, uh, maybe uh, Apollo might get that precious final house robot kill, but you never know. It's, it's like, that, that episode is months away, so we'll see what happens. Weeks away. Weeks. Well, one, two, three, four, five, a month. <laughs> Something like that. Either way, I uh, guess we should give our final thoughts on this episode. Congratulations, Gabriel, for making it to the Heat Final. And congratulations, Dave Laurie, for showing us that anyone can build a robot and for getting over with the fans. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he's built a lot of robots, uh, if you check his builder, I, he has a builder's database page. I think he has like a thousand robots on that page. And with some of the best names I have ever seen. Like, if you don't know what to build, what to name your robot that you're building, just send Dave a picture of it and he'll give it something special. Yeah, and a big shout out to Dave. Uh, he actually uh, watched the podcast, which is really cool. A, a lot of uh, bot builders uh, saw the podcast and they really liked it. Hey, if you guys uh, want to be on the show, I don't know if we can work something out, but it would be nice to have yeah. uh, the, any of you guys talking with us. I'd like to see uh, Craig Dan be on the show. Well, I, I know him. We've uh, communicated at Robo Games. Okay. I, I even uh, put him in a fireman's carry when I was... Uh... <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should make that the uh, the thumbnail for the uh, Fox 6 Heat. Just me with... Craig on my shoulders with this horrified face. Who's the coward now, Craig? <laughs> but yeah, um, this was a hell of a heat. It's a great way to start out the series. And next week, the next heat we have... We have Behemoth, PP3D... Push to Exit. Eruption. All right, all right, let's try this again. We have, in alphabetical order, Behemoth, Cherub, Cobra... Draven, Eruption, Hobgoblin, PP3D, and Push to Exit. And my prediction was Eruption was going to win this heat. Mine too. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be a it's going to be a fun heat. And uh, if the buzz from the Roboteers is set, it's probably going to be the best of the series. Absolutely. So uh, until next week, uh, we're going to be talking about Heat B. Until then, this is the Hardcore Kid. And this is Otaku Nate saying, cease. Rock over London, rock on Chicago, car quest. You're welcome to the pros. I have no idea what you just said. Listen to Wesley Willis. (laughs) Peace out, guys.